Welcome everybody again to, to Kitchen Bath Experts. Um, I'm, I'm here with Yvonne um, Madhavar. We've been talking in a previous video that we'll have about multi-generational um, family needs and kitchen design. We're now going to shift and focus on um, aging in place. Aging in place, in my opinion, is a lot more important than uh, people think it is. And I'm going to change the title a little bit or the, the phraseology and call it um, uh, design for all seasons or design for all, all ages of life. Because in my opinion, you know, or some people refer to universal design, which means it can be used for right. pretty much anybody. Uh, I don't know. Before I jump into some particulars, share your thoughts on kind of what the perception is of what aging in place is like I just did. So for me, aging in place is uh, making sure that you proof your design for future use. For example, whenever I uh, do a bathroom design, especially for someone that's you know above 50 years of age, usually the question is, oh, can we make it more accessible in case of a wheelchair use, in case of mobility issues, in case you know we can't get around without a walker? You know? I, I love that. I, um... One of the advice I give clients when you're when you're getting ready to do a kitchen remodel is to plan um, for those unforeseen things that may happen, an injury, sickness. Right. Uh, and and in, in my my case, I say, what about just when you're busy? You know, I've had people tell me, well, the work triangle doesn't matter too much. Um, I don't really care if the fridge is 30 feet away from the range. And I'll say, well, that's great if you want to get exercise every single time you prepare your meal. I said, but. But what about the times when you don't have enough time to exercise while doing your meal? Why don't you allow yourself right. to get the meal prepared and then exercise in some other way later as you choose? But yeah, I think you, you, what you're trying to suggest here, and I, I'm, I guess, agreeing here, really you should be designing around this being the possibility no matter what. That way you're prepared. Right. Um, and if you don't ever have to use it um, for that need, then it's just comfortable for you to use anyway, right? Um, Correct. And you and like you suggested earlier, um, it is more like universal ideas applied into a design. It's not really, you know, like, well, are you going to use it or not? It's more like, well, in the eventuality that you even sell the property or somebody else uses it, somebody else can then use it appropriately if they lack mobility, right? If they have an injury, if they lack mobility, or if they're just not able, not capable of getting around, like, you know, like when when we're 20 years old. <laughs> yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. Let's, how about we talk and, and pivot to, to products a little bit. Um, let's talk some, some specifics and let's start off mm -hmm. with the most expensive investment product in the kitchen, which is cabinetry. Um, right. Some of the things that, that we see in cabinets, um, and, and I'll kickstart this with, with a couple of ironic things. You mentioned in the multi-generational video that people can go and I'll put a link in this video to that, by the way, down in the description. Um, and if you if you have questions and you have comments, of course, you know what to do um, and, and like the video and subscribe so we can keep um, producing this content, by the way. But um, if you um, you had mentioned rollout shelves and, and I, I love rollout shelves. Um, there's another feature, I think, in wall cabinets because wall cabinets are up high. You've got to grab heavy items mm -hmm. and bring it down to you. Um, I like the, 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 sh the shelves that you can pull down to the countertop, the, the features and the accessories. The downside, of course, is, is you're going to pay twice as much for that cabinet as you would have without that accessory. But otherwise, you feel yourself the need to get on a stool or happen to get on your tippy toes to grab something, pull it down, or ask someone to help you. Um, right. That's just one of the things I see in cabinets that I love. What other things do you see that would be good for you know a aging considerations? So I like to actually bring the upper storage to the base cabinet area. So I oh. kind of design with having like shallow cabinets behind an island or maybe another section where we have like a sort of a credenza where people like, you know, shorter like myself or even shorter than me, like my mom and my grandmother could just easily access. Because even to get to the very first shelf at 54 inches from the floor, I end up having to use a stool. So for me, it's, a, it's better to just have everything lower and more accessible than having it on the upper side. And, and I know that- for you? How tall? I'm 5'2". Okay, okay. That's good barely. to know. Barely. So, yeah, I'm 5'2", <laughs> barely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really. I'm 6 foot 1, so I understand that it's a... Uh, yeah, I'm no, I, I'm pretty foot. short. I'm vertically challenged. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and I and I know it, and my kids who are taller than me, they're like, oh, Mom, you're so little. I'm like, well, 
that's just you know that's just how it is you know so yeah when uh when i need help they just you know come to the come to the rescue and reach out their arm and just get to it or i have to have a stool that's the only other option interesting but you I know as i said i like to bring the I like to bring the storage of like everyday like dishes and things to down to drawers or to base cabinets that are shallow maybe that way we don't have to dig in them so that's, that's one of the things and tricks that i like to you know kind of work with and i know i've designed for for customers that are you know sort of around my height and they always tell me oh i can't even reach the first shelf of the upper cabinet so can we just do something about that and i usually say well we can increase the depth. That's one thing, you know, so that way it's not so tucked back. Maybe a few inches, a couple of inches. Not too much, though, because then you take the counter space away, right? Um, but that has worked. We're, we're bringing the uppers to the base cabinet area. And then maybe we have a more open upper, you know, view of maybe a hood or, you know, something that we emphasize on the backsplash. Or then you bring the tile all the way to the ceiling and that looks nice too, for right? Sure. With some That's floating great. shelves just for decoration, right? <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I actually have um, um, done a few times for clients uh, what I call um, um, raised dish storage. Um, and I've done it in an island. I might, I'll have a couple of um, uh, pictures I can um, put on the video here. But it, um, you know, it's, I'll do a taller cabinet, maybe 48 or 51 inches tall on in an island, on the end of, the end of an island, a little bit deeper so you can put some dish storage in there. But get access to it at, at, at the height that's ideal for the average user, um, or, right. you know, shorter or taller users. Um, but like you say, it brings the wall storage down to the base cabinets and makes it easier to access. Yes. What, what, and I also what, like to have um, a, a um, what is this called? A pot filler is very nice to have as well for, you know, older clients, especially when you don't want to carry the large pot of water from the sink to the stove. It makes a lot of sense and so i like to incorporate that a lot if we can you know in certain instances you just the design just you know doesn't work with it but if we're able to and i and i tell my clients i said you don't need a drain line it's just the, the water to fill into the you know into the stove um i love to use also the the um water filtration systems so the water can go through that before you even put it into the pot filler so that way you get you know filtered water before you you know cook with it so that's important i think that's you know given that our water is just not in good condition all over you know the us i would say with the infrastructure it's a uh, very important to actually have you know filtered water i don't i don't think reverse reverse osmosis works very well because it depletes all the minerals and stuff but that's another conversation to have yeah, but sure. yeah i like to incorporate the the pot filler i think that's another um item that i had forgotten to mention earlier when we were discussing you know the multi-generational i think you know especially for people who don't have that much strength in the arms and they don't yeah. they can't carry that large pot of of uh, water filled in i think it's it's a great idea so so for those uh, of you who may be not familiar with pot fillers basically it's a it's a faucet that goes behind the range it's something you can set your pot on right. top of your stove uh, top and then you can um, turn the water on and fill your pot there without having to go to the sink fill it up carry it to the to the um to the cooking surface and so it saves you one step not a little bit more by the time you've used some of the water to cook with it and then and then dished it out to to your guests then the amount of water left over to carry or get rid of this is lighter and easier to manage so if you're going to do a, a typical door under counter fridge um instead of a drawer my suggestion you might consider seeing if is there a way to raise that up off the floor a little bit so that you don't have to bend down as far right if you got a bad lower back mm -hmm. or if it's uncomfortable for you, and you use it frequently which is typically the refrigerator instead of the freezer let's li lift it up off the floor a little bit if it's a drawer those are convenient um, at least the top drawer is more convenient to reach down and not have to bend down as far um, to use those for aging um, needs uh, and, and even for typical users the funny thing about this i think going back to the beginning of our discussion is Aging in place makes it way more comfortable for people who are not, let's say, aged and, and struggling, makes it more usable for those that are aging and struggling. Um, yeah. So any other thoughts on the appliances before we move on to some other products? I do like the idea of raising, like you suggested, the appliance from the floor. So when there's split appliances like a drawer, you know, refrigeration, you can put a regular drawer below that and just, the, you know, the refrigerator on the top uh, on the microwave as well that's a good idea where it's reachable it's you know at arm's length 
and you don't have to dig for it above a cabinet or take counter space away, right? So that's a good idea to have. Although I'm trying to stay away from using microwaves, but you know, it's kind of like people want them, right? So, yeah, sure. <laughs> but well, I do not like the one over the over the mic over the stove. That the microwave above the stove just I think it's an overkill in size. It's just a waste of space, and it just looks bulky, and um, I don't think you gain much from it. And the vent yeah. is not that good anyway. So yeah, for those who haven't seen my video yet about that, I also put a link in the, the description. There's a video about avoiding over the range microwaves. Um, and yeah, they're too integrated in, a, in our, um, let's say in our, our entry level marketplace for this industry. Um, but I think eventually they will go by, by the wayside and there'll be some other uh, method that's way more safe and more, more, uh, accessible. I want to do address one more thing on appliances. I think that could be a, a really good consideration, um, is the dishwasher. Um, one of the things about yeah. dishwashers I find a little bit frustrating and I'm sure many users can uh, uh, appreciate is that in order to use the dishwasher you have to pull the door all the way down to the floor to access the dishes i guess you can pull the door part way and then access the um top rack um but uh even still if you have to get to the bottom rack you have to pull the door all the way down to do so which means you've got to reach all the way down to lift it back up i hopefully think that technology will integrate like with car doors put your foot underneath it and have the door automatically you know lift up you know some sort of mechanisms to where you can press a button and it, and it lowers press a button and it goes up instead of having to always bend down a lift or you know push it all the way down however i can tell you in the meantime you know for for our audience um you know yvonne maybe have, have you uh, done much with dishwasher drawers in the past i have and fisher Pikel is the one that we've used i know that there's new uh, manufacturers making them but i don't know that they're that popular i do like them i think that they're great i've done a kitchen before years back where the client said absolutely no regular dishwasher for me i don't want to bend so then we ended up doing a dishwasher drawer on each side of the sink and that looked great and it was with a built-in panel so it looked like the cabinet doors and it was beautiful and the client yeah. said oh i love my 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 dishwasher's just hidden away and um i don't have to bend anywhere to you know utilize them so absolutely. that's something great and i think they should probably start making more of that i would even like to see a dishwasher drawer that's deep really deep and then just you just get a regular like six or eight inch drawer on the bottom i think that's that would be point. wonderful really right? good point uh, maybe uh, we could suggest thing. that to the manufacturer <laughs> right right <laughs> If Fisher and Pico representatives, you're, you're watching this, just so you know, we're not getting any any, any revenue or ad, ad referral from this. Uh, we're doing this just because um, there's only uh, they've been the they were the the pioneer of this this uh, invention in the U.S. about 20 years ago. Um, I actually have the Fisher and Pico dishwasher drawers in my house, um, and I'll put a picture in here of a project I did not too long ago where I put a single dish top dish dishwasher drawer on one next to the primary sink and a single one next to a secondary sink so it's really nice for cleanup purposes but you never have to bend down very far at all to use it to, to do right. the cleanup i will throw one other thing too and i'll mention the manufacturer only because there's only one that i know of um, and there is now a sink that has basically you've got one large basin for doing using for clean uh, your typical sink use and it's got another almost looks like a basin but it's a dishwasher inside the sink uh, have you seen those really? by Fortile? I have not seen that. I've that seen the sinks cool. that are integrated with a with a chopping block and uh -huh. a strainer, which are great because you can move it about in the channels of the sink. And I love it because it increases your counter space and then you don't have to cut, you know, on top of a of a cutting board on top of your countertop. You basically sure. are cutting at the same height as the countertop, which is really ergonomically correct instead of especially for somebody shorter right i mean they're not <laughs> cutting up here you're cutting at a lower height so yeah i love that i i do like that in the company that i um that i seen that with is rubati so okay. um yeah rubati sinks i i love their products they're great and uh yeah you should probably go out and see one so, <laughs> just, just, just again a reminder we're in, i don't get any referral uh, fees of any sort from anybody right now yet that's correct <laughs> let's, let's hope that changes at some point down the road because i love doing what i do and we can hopefully um push good products out there and get some sort of recognition and maybe um help this, this show to continue to grow i will mention um on that full tile sink one of the things that's nice about that manufacturer's design i've watched it for about 10 years since they first brought it to the market but it's getting better and better. The, the only thing I'd suggest is if, you know, if it's for one person, 
it's a great use sink if there's um you know if you can have maybe two but anything more than that i think it probably would be um not big enough or um uh versatile enough to use um so maybe you have a secondary dishwasher that you use when you do have a crowd or a lot of people or like you said yvonne maybe you use that as a cabinet except for periodically when you have a, a lot of people or a lot of dishes to clean up you can use that uh, dishwasher for that well for the sake of time let's let's jump on to the next product um category um let's talk about countertops what what might you consider um in countertops when it comes to aging in place you know considerations is there anything well recently i was introduced to um well i would say recently to me is a couple of years back um to porcelain countertops so they're impervious to heat they're you know completely sealed you don't have to seal them every year like we do with natural stones and you don't have to worry about putting anything hot on them which is a problem with quartz materials right so i think that's a really nice product it's it's newer i know the fabricator has to take longer to cut them otherwise the product will um not you know fare properly for the joints when they are creating the edge details so it will cost a little bit more money to fabricate that versus a regular quartz or stone material but the qualities of it um the fact that you don't have to worry about putting your hot pot of out of the oven or from the stovetop into the counter is huge because sometimes yeah. that happens without even you know kind of thinking about it you're like oh my gosh i gotta drop it somewhere and there's no trivet and you end up ruining the counter countertop possibly right it's like yeah. oh no yeah. now there's now there's a mark or maybe there's a crack or or something i know with natural stones that's not really much of an issue but then the problem with natural stones is that you have to keep up the maintenance because they're porous so you have to maintain you know sealing them every once a year or every six months right so um i think that's a really so i've discovered that as a new product and i and i i've pitched it to my clients and they've been very receptive to it so i think that's a nice thing to have i will maybe mention too to, as well one of the consideration on countertops it incorporates of course your cabinetry is the heights of your countertops um and like uh, yvonne like you said if if um for instance i i uh injure myself and i'm having to use crutches or i'm using a walk or i'm in a wheelchair temporarily or long term um, i might want to consider <laughs> having at least one one a lower height counter in my kitchen it can be good for baking purposes it can be used for you know for kids it can be um and it can certainly be good for um, um aging um considerations or limitations as well um so that might be just one thing to throw out Let, let's jump into another product category as well um let's talk about um uh, flooring is is there anything that you might suggest differently um, to somebody who wants to think about aging applications versus not well, one thing to consider whenever you pick out any material is really the maintenance of it, right? Okay. I know I love the look of real wood floors, especially in the kitchen. They look very rich. They're beautiful. Um, but if you're thinking long term and the possibility of having to refinish them after, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, then maybe think about different products, right? So i do like the look and the features of luxury vinyl planks and we've actually installed them even in really high-end projects where it's impervious to water you don't have really no maintenance on it and it's soft on the feet you know one of the complaints with tile or stone um especially in the kitchen especially as you age is that you know your knees get the the brunt of it right and then you start yeah. feeling yeah. knee pains and so if I have clients that have issues with mobility and knee problems, I always recommend doing the luxury vinyl planks. And you can add even a layer of uh, an underlayment be below that, even if they come with it, just to make it a little bit, you know, softer on the feet. So that's a nice product. And there's different categories as well, different price points. Um, the more expensive ones look very realistic. I mean, if you're just looking at them from far away, you, you're probably not even going to tell that it's not wood they look that good. You know, they can yeah. fool pretty much anyone. I know when you get down close to it and you touch it and feel it, you're like, well, this is not really wood. But, um, you know, as I said, if you don't want to worry about that down the road, I think that's one of the products that I would probably recommend. 
Yeah. Well, thank you. Good, good suggestion. Um, I'll throw a shout out as well um, to a, um, a designer who um, focuses on, on this area, uh, Olga Gomez, if I'm saying it right, it's uh, G-O-M-E-S. Um, but she's got, I'll sit and put a link in here as well, but I was just watching a video not so long ago about, she talked about cork flooring and I've done cork in a little bit, so a few jobs. Um, and like you're saying, Yvonne, where it's uh, nice on the feet, it's, it has some cushion to it, um, has some resilience. Um, though you can't refinish cork that I'm aware of anyway, um, uh, but you also can't do that with LVP or LVT. Um, another product you might consider in the same vein of a product might be uh, a, um, an, an engineered wood floor um, that you can also say sand down and refinish um, and, and, and have it have new life. But yeah, I think that your first point I really appreciate and hope that our users understand is, is the maintenance. The least amount of time you have to get on your hands and knees and clean things up, the better. Um, and so unless you're have, hiring someone to come and clean your kitchen and take care of it, and if you have to do it yourself, and it's nice to not have to do that long. So uh, tile floors with heavy grout lines, um, you know, vinyl with heavy texture, um, you know, you probably want to avoid because it's going to be harder to maintain and harder to clean. Um, all right, uh, aging in place. Uh, any other any other products that you want to talk about? Lighting, lighting might be a good one. What what are some thoughts or suggestions on the lighting side? Well, lighting has gotten um, you know, it, lighting is one of those things that you have to incorporate now in every project you do. I always recommend it under cabinet lighting, especially for task lighting. You know, over the over the sink pathways. I mean, lighting in itself, lighting design. It's it's a whole you know, kind of like a section of design that has a lot of intricacy. So um, I like to recommend even tokic lighting in certain instances, inside cabinet lighting, you know, over the head, pendant lights, chandeliers. Um, but a good lighting plan will always take into account the locations of where you're turning on and off the lighting, you know, the position of where the light goes, the the wattage of the light. I mean, I know everything is now LED, especially here in California. We have to make sure that 80% of the lighting that we use is, you know, LED. Awesome. Well, um, I'm going to save kind of a, a, what, what I, uh, technology I'd like to talk about as, as kind of the concluding part of our conversation about aging and place needs for kitchens today. Uh, before I do that, I want to just mention on, on the lighting side, um, as you just mentioned, first of all, the LED, I think, is great. One suggestion I might um, tell um, our, our viewers is uh, my kind of go-to recommendation to clients is that lighting is one of the least expensive ways to make the biggest impact on a space and can make it feel brighter. Um, if, if you can't make the overall room lighting, the ambient lighting better, and if you if the, the accent lighting, the mood lighting is maybe something you can't figure out a way to make work, make your highest priority your task lighting, your countertop lighting, your lighting for where you're cooking and cleaning, uh, and make sure that you that lighting is sufficient, or maybe even you have a, um, enough lighting options to go even brighter than you would think is, is needed, so that you have that option if, if, if need be. And today, lighting is so inexpensive to implement um, on a larger scale. Maybe even consider lighting inside your cabinets where um, you open it up, if you, you can integrate that in. And when you open the drawers, then you can see inside the drawers easier. Um, as your eyes um, get worse, you know, I'm um, in my 50s and my eyes, uh, you know, I've got glasses, but, um, you know, at nighttime or when it's dark and you don't want to wake people up and you're going into the kitchen to grab something, make sure you're grabbing the right utensil, whatever you're trying to grab, because you can easily see what you're looking for. Um, one thing just to correct, um, so, so first of all, if, if you like what you're hearing, if you like what we're doing here today, will you please give us a thumbs up? Will you please subscribe to the channel? And then certainly we'll have a link to Yvonne's um, company um, and uh, in, in the description below. So you can go if you're down in Southern California in the LA area and you'd like to talk to her about a project, let's send you to her and get, get some good advice. Um, I did make a mistake earlier. I mentioned Olga Gomez. She does have a channel um, dedicated to uh, designing for aging considerations. Uh, I don't remember the name of her channel, but I'll put the link in the, in the description as well. But the, the designer I was talking about that was talking about the cork flooring was actually Wanda Gatz. I'm going to pronounce that wrong, I'm sure, but it's Wanda G-A-Z-D-Z. I'll again put a link for her into that video in the description. So, um, But she spends a little time talking about cork. I've only done cork on a couple of projects in my career. Um, it was an interesting project to work with. All right, let's talk about technology. <clears throat> um, 
you know, what, what do you see um, are the pros and cons about what's happening with technology for those who are aging? <laughs> well, I, I don't agree with having everything smart in the home. I like, I like analog. I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's That's my phone. That's an old analog phone right there. Sure is. <laughs> I still have a landline. <laughs> and me. those are rare to come by. So yes, I'm actually proud of my landline. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do like to incorporate some, you know, features that are smart, like uh, maybe, you know, alarm systems. I don't really agree with having your refrigerator figure out what you need to buy. I don't think that's you know, necessary. I, I really try to minimize um, electromagnetic sort of uh, pollution in the home. So I, I'm not a particular fan of having everything um, automated. And I know that probably Gen, uh, Gen Zs are, or, you know, uh, millennials are probably going to be like, oh, she's an old fart. And, you know, uh, what is she talking about? That's the, that's the next thing. And I know when I've been to the KBIS show, they are pushing this sort of a uh, you know new idea of having the entire home including the kitchen completely automated yeah so i'm still old school i kind of don't really care for that i don't want to go to a computer screen and figure out what my list of uh you know groceries will have to be um so yeah that's just me i mean i do like to have some features that are very a functional, you know, and, and can make my life easier, but to incorporate everything into a single, you know, computer that kind of reads everything and figures everything for you. I just, I just think that that makes people lazier. Me personally, I think that's what happens. Yeah. You know, it makes you not want to think about exactly what it is that you need and you're just relying on what this computer is going to figure for you. So, um, I hope that's not the wave of the future. I really think that, uh, we should actually get back to basics at, at a you know at a deeper level like cooking yeah. for ourselves for example we a lot of us just eat out a lot right instead of really cooking at home yeah. because it's so convenient to just eat out but then we spend more money eating out and maybe it's not as healthy as you could make it be right so yeah. um i'm for one are more of a advocate of uh going back to basics and as long as we make that comfortable and we incorporate some of the newer technology, like you said, lighting and task lighting and, you know, being able to change moods in your home, I think that's wonderful. But other than that, don't mess with my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, well, on the technology side, um, I, I concur. I think, um, you know, simple um, and safe is really important for, for the, the order you get and the less that your, your, um, uh, senses maybe are as strong or, or keen as they used to be. Um, I, one thing I do kind of wonder if could be beneficial down the road would be if I'm cooking for my, let's say, you know, going back to kind of mixing our conversations we've had that you guys can go watch the multi-generational video as well. But, you know, if I'm, if I'm um, um, leaving for, uh, you know, let's say a long afternoon trip and uh, I've, I've got something in the oven for my mother or mother-in-law or grandmother, you know, maybe I can verify that it's been turned off or whatever with my phone while I'm traveling without having to, you know, worry about whether or not she remembered to turn it off um, in, in traveling. So I could see some value in that having a hybrid option where, you know, it's analog for for the the older users that don't use technology, but for those who do want to use it, they can have that option. I kind of like that option um, and flexibility. Um, one last thing I feel important to suggest here. As you were talking about that technology, um, I'd like to, to talk really briefly um, about fuel, um, about um, gas versus electric cooking, because you're thinking, talking about that, and I was concerned about safety um, with, with older users. You know, most of you know that the downsides, in my opinion, about the traditional electric cooking surface that's a smooth top cook, cooking surface is you know, if you can see and, and notice that the red is on when it's hot, then you're less likely to stick your hand on it and get burned if while well, it's either cooling down or warming up before you start cooking on it. Um, however, it's still a hazard in my opinion. With gas, the problem is, of course, you can see the flame when it's turned on and you can be an exact, um, you know, you cook exact, you can see exactly the, the level you want based on the flame. The downside with it, of course, is if you have the, the gas turned on without the igniter kicking the gas on. So now you fill up the house with gas, 
and causing a potential for a fire or explosion. Um, naturally, induction is a good um, alternate for those things. Uh, do you recommend a lot of induction to your clients, Yvonne? Um, I've just gotten introduced to induction cooking not that long ago as well. Okay. And I ended up installing a range, an induction range in my showroom. And I really like it. I just, it's a learning curve though. I have sure. to kind of figure out the times of cooking and, you know, how fast things uh, heat up. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's, there's features on them that make it heat up super fast and it's faster than I would imagine. So, um, you know, that's, can be a problem sometimes if you just leave things in the on top of the stove and you just left it alone, like you do on low heat when you're cooking with gas. Um, so I do like actually the induction uh, cooking. It's a newer, you know, it's a newer technology, and I know that it's been embraced in like different parts of the world as well. You know, my family's from Ecuador, and in Ecuador, it's the newer way of cooking. But I do have to say that I do miss cooking also with with gas. And then yeah. it's like, yeah. I'm kind of torn because there's certain things that require that really high heat, like the high BTUs. And you can't really get that with uh, with induction, you know, even yeah. if you put it all the way in hot, it, it takes a little bit of time for that to happen. So there is a bit of a curve, you know, on, on how it tastes, on, on how long you cook with it and how the pots work. Because I know also you, you can't use pots that are mixed with different metal alloys it has to be iron or stainless steel yeah so yeah, magnetic. you know yeah it can't be aluminum you know no. it, I, some people might think well if it's just metal it's okay but if it has a little bit of mixture of, of aluminum it just won't work uh, so yeah, yeah that's happens. something to take into account yeah yeah so if, you, if you're not familiar with it, the induction uses mag magnets to uh, to cook with or to to create the heat uh, the nice thing about it is that you can literally have a dollar bill or a piece of paper underneath your pan. You can cook, and and the paper won't burn because it's going it's being um, um, created by magnetics. Um, you can put your hand down down next to the the burner, and it won't be. It might be warm, but it won't be hot. Um, so it's the new technology has a lot of advances and things to offer. But like you said, pay close attention. Use a designer. You know, get with somebody who's maybe like in our case certified with the National Kitchen and Bath Association. Even your interior designers um, with an NCIDQ or IIDA or some of the other designers who have, have had plenty of training in the space can help guide you in your decision making. But either way, um, you know, hopefully this will help you as you're planning for aging in place. Well, Yvonne, it's been a pleasure. I'm really grateful to have that you've uh, agreed and joined me on this uh, this video call. Thank you for having me.